please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. And over heart. Aye. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Please be seated. That was like the first All right, again, we are at the June 21st Village Woodbury Planning Board meeting. Um, has the board had a chance to review the minutes from 6 7 that were presented? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll offer a motion to accept those minutes. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, first items are administrative business. Um, Fisher uh, submitted a check to the building department late this morning, so they have brought their escrow up to date. Uh, Skytop Road LLC ARB, ARB Ridge Preservation Water Quality Protection Overlay of demo and reconstruction of a single family dwelling. Said property is located at 18 Skytop Road in Highland Mills and is known as the Village of Woodbury Tax Maps, Section 217, Block 3, Lot 7. Uh, after repeated attempts from the building department, um, the application still remains in a negative escrow for an extended period of time. Village codes allows this board to uh, close and deny any application that fails to replenish escrow in a timely fashion. So I'm gonna offer a motion to deny Skytop Road LLC slash ARB for the failure to replenish escrow. One second. Any questions? No. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Okay. On to our regular agenda, shops at Woodbury's ARB. Review draft decision for uh, pylon sign located at an approved mixed-use commercial center. Said property is located at the intersection of Losey Lane and Route 32 in Central Valley. It is known as the Village of Woodbury Tax Maps, Section 225, Block 1, Lot 34.1, 34.22, and 75. For once, you actually don't have to get up and give a spiel. Okay. Um, so. Uh, several pages of factions findings on June 21st, 2023. Uh, the planning board refer you from the secret consistency fi finding for this application. Uh, do I have to, I don't have to do on page four, right, Kelly? No, I'll just summarize that um, page four includes a finding related to village code section 310 30 B1E and repeats that. Um, and on June 21st, 2023, the planning board modified on the number of colors permitted on the multi-tenant directory sign, finding that additional colors proposed would not be distracting to drivers. Additionally, the current tenant signage proposed by E. McDonald, Starbucks and Coffee, Courtyard by Marriott, at the Dental and Chipotle and Cranston Grill, consists of logos for those businesses, so the sign does not contain more than two type faces in compliance with those two. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, and again, this application is exempt from the current moratorium uh, due to exemptions number five and six. After all that fun legal language, we get into specific conditions. All conditions of prior approvals and connections with this property shall continue to be in full force and effect, and this resolution does not supersede or otherwise modify such prior approvals and conditions except as specifically set forth in this resolution. No building permit shall be issued authorizing construction of structures inconsistent with the architectural renderings submitted to and approved by the Architectural Review Board as part of this approval, nor shall any certificate of occupancy issue for any structures constructed except in conformance with such renderings. Any deviations from such renderings will require the further planning board review. Prior to the signing of the renderings, the applicant shall comply with the memorandum of the village engineer dated June 2nd, 2023, to the satisfaction of the village engineer. To maintain compliance with the decision of the vill uh, village zoning board of appeals, the sign must maintain identical messages on each side of the sign. I'll offer the motion to accept the draft resolution of approval. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Have a good night, sir. Next item, Woodbury Villas. Consider amended resolution of previously approved site plan with an ARB of community building and parking lot within the Woodbury Villas subdivision set properties located at 4 Central Valley Line. It is known as the Village of Woodbury Tax Map, Section 254, Block 4, Lot 2. There's, oh, okay, you're here. Okay. Um, so this is a motion that we previously, uh, or an application that we previously had approved. Uh, the applicant has come back before us tonight. Um, they are still in the process of uh, procuring the necessary easements for their project. Uh, one of those easements they have to get from the town. That easement is subject to a 20-day uh, referendum. Uh, so what this 
modification to the approval that we already gave is to allow them to uh, start construction so they don't miss the construction window so they can start the foundation work, but no COs will be issued for the use of the building until they successfully uh, get all of the easements that are required. And there's, I think, it's three or four of them. Right. All right. And it's basically, this is going to be buyer beware. They're going to now proceed going forward uh, without the necessary easements. So if there's, for some reason, they can't get the easements, they either got to tear it down, move it, or they won't get to see, they can't get to see, oh, they, they can't occupy the building. So they are now. Can they leave it in a half built condition? Um, no, they would have to finish the building, right? They just couldn't be occupied. Yeah, I think that they're not going to have an issue getting the easements. However, okay. if they do, they can just come back to this board and maybe relocate the pipes or something like that so that they don't need to. Okay. That yeah. may cost them more money or it may be more engineering difficult, but there's options. That there's are options. Involved. Yeah. But it's on them now at this point. Right. So they're proceeding at their own risk. Uh, okay. All those stuff in red, right? Okay, so how about we go to the specific conditions that we're modifying the resolution with? I presume your office has a copy of this already? Yes. Okay. All right, so specific uh, condition four. Uh, prior to the signing of the plans, the applicant shall comply with the memorandum of the village engineer dated October 13, 2022, uh, and revise the plans as needed to the satisfaction of the village engineer. Prior to the issuance of the certificate of occupancy, the easement re reference in said memorandum of the village engineer and as determined necessary by the planning board attorney shall be drafted to the satisfaction of the planning board attorney, obtained as needed, and filed with the county clerk's office. Proof of such filing shall be provided to the building department prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. If the occupant is unable to obtain the required easements, the applicant shall return to the planning board for relocation of the infrastructure as needed. I'll offer a motion to uh, accept the amended draft resolution or resolution of approval. Second, any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, just a note, we are still waiting for plans to be signed and sealed by an engineer. Yes, we were uh, waiting on this and then we'll send them over Okie dokie. You're welcome. Now this is where the wheels fall off. <laughs> <laughs> Next item, Avalon Hotel, review status of project for proposed four-story 134, uh, 130 room hotel at 94 Turner Road in Central Valley. Said property is known as the Village of Woodbury Tax Maps, section 226, block one, lot five, and 6.2. Good evening, sir. I think the last time we saw you, we were behind the screen, right? Behind the screen? I, I don't think I had anybody here. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, We just lob spitballs at her when we need her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. It used to be softballs, but she got upset when I hit her with one of those, so. <laughs> less, less accuracy. <laughs> yeah. Good evening, everyone. John Queenan with Lankin Tully Engineering here for the applicant. Also with me tonight is Christy Adana from Silver, Silverberg and Zalantis, counsel for the applicant, and the applicant, Paul Oliveira from Avalon Building Systems. Uh, before you with, with a project that has been around for quite some time now, um, floating in the weeds or however you want to say it. Uh, we last gave you an update last year when we were before the, the DOT, talking about access. We finally have come to a conclusion with the DOT, I believe, in conceptual value. I don't have any more kidneys left to give them. So we finally did get a letter from them. Um, basically, how it works out, and I'll go right into the traffic aspect of it. They are willing to permit us for a driveway on Oakland Avenue, as shown on the site plan. That would be full access from our side, left turn restricted access from 32. So you wouldn't be able to make any left turns into the site at that driveway, at that location. Also tied with this would be improvements to Turner Road intersection, which the other hotel site also has to do, and it's whoever needs it first is how it's being set up. So the way I understand the way the DOT would like it, our plan set will also incorporate an identical design of the Turner Road reconfiguration, as well as the left turn lane there, and the other applicant, the Marriott Hotel or whatever it is right now, would also have an identical 
plan set attached to their plans for that access also. And it's whoever wins what, the race. I was going to say, whoever gets the shovel on the ground first is going to be the one that has to build it? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And that's how it's been set up with the, with the DOT. We haven't really done much on the site plan design because we've been working with the state. So this is probably our first real submission back to the board um, with regards to that. I can go through the plan again if, if you want a brush up on some history, um, or we can get right into some of, the, some of the consultant comments that I'd like to just go over with the board. I think mainly tonight we'd like to try to discuss with the board um, setting up the secret process and how the board um, would like to take that forward. Does the board need a refresher on the project, or are we still? You're good? You're good? Okay. Have your answer. Okay. You want me to go to our consultants first and then, or? Yeah, well, the main comment that I'd like to touch upon was in Natalie's memo uh, regarding, regarding the zoning. So if you recall, we're doing a lot line change or a two lot subdivision, however, however the, the board wants to deem that. Uh, the front parcel is the martial arts studio. Right. Under the code, the definition for personal service use, it lists martial arts studio use. So that's what's on the plan for zoning. So the, that parcel is under that zoning, and obviously the hotel is under the hotel overlay zoning. So as the plan is proposed right now, it complies with the zoning. There's no additional variances needed. The project received its variance for the access going out to Turner Road um, probably three, four years ago at this point. So that was our main concern, is we feel that we meet the zoning. The definition of personal service includes martial arts use. It's not commercial recreation. So we just wanted to, to clarify that tonight. Natalie? You. I Thank see your you. Feet at least. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of funny, though, talking to you through the board. So, um, no, I Mr. appreciate uh, the update that John just provided. And um, just to touch on that zoning issue, I believe the plans for this martial arts, uh, the martial arts site plan building plan. <laughs> Um, was originally approved as a commercial recreation use. Um, so I think we'll have to look into that a little bit further and see um, you know, if the zoning has changed since then and ask Mike for an opinion on what this would actually be classified as. So um, you know, unless Kelly has any different recommendations, I think that's how we'll proceed with that. Um, you know, so that's the first issue. And I think that that was kind of a threshold issue for this application if they did require a variance. Um, basically, they would not comply with the lot area requirements for a commercial recreation use. Um, our memo notes that the deductions for lot area should include utility easements. It's not clear if there are any on this property at this time, so the applicant should update the plans to reflect either A, that there are none, or B, the appropriate deductions. Um, <clears throat> the second sort of threshold issue, which I think that the applicant could probably modify their plan to comply, is that um, <clears throat> for the hotel zoning, there's a 15-foot landscaped buffer required around all property lines. So we did reach out to the building inspector for an opinion on whether or not fences and retaining walls could be permitted within that 15-foot setback. And he's opined that they are structures and not permitted. So that'll need to be adjusted on a future plan from the applicant um, and or a variance needed for that issue. Um, let's see. Associated with the building height for the hotel, as you know, there are code requirements uh, for rooftop equipment based on how much area they occupy on the roof and how far they are set back from the building edge. So at the appropriate time, the applicant should provide that information for you to confirm compliance with the building height requirements of the code. Um, the applicant is requesting a waiver for the required parking on the site. It's 14.7% request deduction. Um, as you know, the code permits the planning board up to 25% reduction in parking. Um, if you find that a use or combination of uses on a single lot um, would generate less parking than the use would require per zoning. Um, so we kind of defer to Collier's on any particular comments that they have on that issue. Uh, the other thing that I think is important to kind of bring before the board and before the applicant is the ZBA decision uh, appears to require the bus parking be located on the front parcel um, of the hotel property. Right now it's located on the rear parcel, so uh, we've recommended you know, that the board consider whether or not the plan as it is complies with the ZBA's decision and maybe look for some guidance from Kelly um, if she knows what the plan before the ZBA included at that time. 
on that issue. Um, won't go too much into the traffic uh, comments that we had in our memo because I think some of them are repeated from Collier's and also, you know, ultimately we defer to them, but uh, there should be an easement associated with the UMAC parcel on the applicant's driveway that they're proposing opposite Oakland um, just to allow, I call it the UMAC parcel, it's the martial arts parcel. I hope nobody <laughs> gets confused when I say that. Um, so that they can have that access in perpetuity since they're basically eliminating their direct access to 32 and now have to access the driveway for the hotel. Um, let's see. We've asked for turning movements uh, for fire trucks coming from the north. Um, basically that would have to enter via left hand turn at the Turner, Turner Road and Route 32 intersection. So that should be provided. Uh, we've also noted that there is a small parking area located on the front parcel for the hotel. Um, there isn't any pedestrian facilities right now as far as like sidewalk or crosswalk shown on the plans, basically to cross Turner Road. So that's something that the board can consider, um, you know, just basically allowing that movement of, so that people can, from the hotel could access that parking lot. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, a projected water and sewer demand form is required for the project. Uh, we do have some minor comments on the water and sewer connections proposed, which we assume the applicant will be able to comply. This applicant or application is subject to the moratorium. The SWIP remains to be provided. Uh, we've asked for the floodplain limits to be shown on the plan. Uh, if there's any disturbance to the floodplains, then the applicant will be required to file for a floodplain development permit. Site lighting should be limited to 0.1 foot candles at the property line, which is per your typical requirements. Um, we've asked the applicant to confirm compliance with the landscaping and screening requirements of the code. Loading dock area should be noted on the plan. Um, and I think that um, recently the planning board provided comments to the village board on discretion with loading docks and how many should be required uh, per code. I'm not sure if that was adopted already but um, that's something for the applicant to note. Um, right now there's none shown on the plan, so they'll have to review that with you at the pr appropriate time. A pylon sign is proposed. The details of that should be provided for you to consider. Uh, the applicant is proposing to dedicate a portion of their property along Turner Road to the Village of Woodbury. As you know, acceptance of that is at the discretion of the Village Board of Trustees. Uh, nonetheless, the meets and bounds description is required for that and the subdivision. Which kind of leads me to my next comment about whether or not this actually uh, would be constituted a minor subdivision under the code or just a lot line adjustment. Uh, so we've asked or kind of recommended in our memo that you review that with Kelly. Um, you know, if she has any opinions on that. It's not very clear to us under the code. Um, and then there are wetlands existing on the site. So they are regulated by the DEC as well as the Army Corps of Engineers and also under your local zoning code, so the applicant should review chapter 165 and provide any information that you need to consider. And then again, John said that they wanted to advance Seeker, so we have provided comments on the EAF part one that was provided previously, uh, not necessarily with this submission. So um, I think once those comments are addressed, uh, the board would wanna consider having Kelly draft a FEAF part two. And that's all I have. You sure? Uh, you know, I don't know. You want me to keep going? I'm sure there's a couple I missed. <laughs> well, sure. yep. Questions for Natalie? So, Kelly, I remember when they were in front of the ZBA, and now it's been two, three years at this point. I think it was even longer. The little parking lot in the front, I, I, if I remember correctly, was supposed to be used for, for the buses. And isn't that how it was presented to the ZBA? I think so, but I don't. At the time, yes, it was presented. The buses were out there along with that parking lot for basically employee parking. That was that was the thought. Right. And then there were comments received that could we move the bus parking somewhere else so that it wouldn't be visible driving down 32. I mean, I don't disagree with those so, comments, but I don't know how it plays with the how when the ZBA rendered their decision. Yeah, I don't. I'll that, take a look at the yeah. plan. We're gonna see who wrote that one, right? It wasn't me. I have no idea. Uh, 
<laughs> I know, I wasn't there. It's been yeah, long. might have been. Oh, wow, that was. Uh, been Mr. Dickover, Rob Dickover. Was it Rob? Or was it Lisa? No, I think it was Dickover. Yeah, I think it was Rob. Wow, it's been that long. It's been that long. Yes. We got our approval early March, right in 2020, right before everything shut down. Okay. The zoning board, it was like one of the last in person meetings. Christy is on it for the record. Um, the, the issue before the zoning board was whether the lots on, separated by Turner Road could be considered one lot if they were merged. Right. And then whether that could be considered frontage on by having the frontage on Route 32. And we did receive a favorable interpretation. It wasn't actually a variance. Um, the zoning board's interpretation was in our favor based upon the case law that that, that merger could happen and consider the lots um, once it, the, the pars, port, portion of the parcel is separated from the martial arts studio. Um, it would be one lot with the adequate frontage. So I think that was really the focus of the zoning board's determination at the time. No, I remember I remember it now because this was all about access because the hotel needed access from a state or a state road, a state road in order to be, be there. I just don't know if it referred specifically to anything on the decision. And that's what no. I'd like to check with you. No, no, I'm not holding anybody to, uh, to anything right I, now. I was hoping that I had it. And I was like, oh my gosh, when did this actually happen? And I don't, I don't have those. So I'll have to get it from Maria. Okay. Or, I think I have it too. I can oh, send to you. Everybody has it from me. <laughs> I think I have it in my file cabinet at home too, but I'm sure I do. It's probably right here somewhere. <laughs> if I could, okay. sorry, if I could just ask one additional question of, of Natalie. Um, you said the building inspector had made a determination regarding the setbacks and what would be considered structures that would be permitted. And you said he had made a determination. Is that in writing? Yes. Can we get a copy of that sure. if we don't have it already? Yeah. It's Thank you email. very much. No problem. And I, and I know you want to move secret along and I can tell you from the neighboring hotel we're in there in their draft EIS right now so I'm going to say prepare yourself that is where we're going to end up that as, is as well correct I, I was going to you know me I'm blunt I was going to ask just that question if yes. that's where we're heading then we will revise the EAF for the comments that we've received and we will begin to prepare a draft scoping document for the consultants and the, and the board's review unless and the sooner that you can send yeah. in the EAF Two. And get you a draft of what's going on for you. To, to you want you're you're gonna you wanna do the scope draft? No. Okay. No. I wanna do part two. She'll do the part two and then I'll, after we'll we do the scope. Uh, yeah, so after we accept the part two, yep. then, then yeah. But you have samples of what this board has approved previously and if you need one for the neighboring hotel, we can send it. It's gonna be almost I would imagine That's, it's gonna be almost <laughs> identical, maybe some slight tweaks here or there, but I've already gone through the one for the for the neighboring applicant and pretty much identical, maybe some weeks here or there, but nothing. So I mean, I would just, that's what I say, I would prepare yourself, that's where the road you're gonna go down. Okay, um, just to backtrack one thing, I did look at that buffer. Um, I can move the walls out of the buffer, so we should be able to accommodate that. That's okay. the landscaping buffer? Yeah, Correct. so the retaining walls yep. are out. Yep. Well, no, the retaining walls will still be there, but they won't be. They won't be in that 15. In that, in that 15. 15 foot buffer. And then um, on the traffic, um, we did supply, I think, and I'll, I'll unearth it. There was a there was a report basically going through the waiver request for the reduction of the parking and why. And it was associated with this hotel not having a conference center, not having like meeting rooms, and also providing the spaces for the buses. Right. So I can get that back to the board, and that could be included in obviously in our EIS. Right. And I remember um, when you guys were here a few years ago, the initial concept was that they were going to be bringing buses up from the city, dropping off at the commons, parking Correct. the buses, and yes. then that's still the same? It's the, still the same general plan, yes. Okay. Yes. Very good. So there's not going to be overnight parking for the buses? They're just... They're not supposed to stay overnight, right? It's supposed to be a day trip thing. Yeah. It's a day trip or they will stay overnight. We have provided spaces solely for buses. I think it's why we got to find out how the ZBA's decision ties yep. in, because if it's going to be an overnight thing, that's a little different. you would want... In the back. In the back. Yeah, I, you know, Kelly will research it, but yeah. I think the ZBA was more focused on if the access plan changed. And I think they referenced that plan so that if the driveway were to move or there was some change in that layout, that we'd have to go back. No, I, not that I don't believe you, but if I don't want to tick the attorneys off, because no, no, then, they, then will, they yell at me. She will be very thorough. I get she will do her job. It's, it's very tough. She'll very, call me with the bid. Very, very, very tough. <laughs> Part 
prepared, um, but I've heard mention we're going to submit revised plans, and I thought maybe at this point you might just want the revised PAS so that they can move forward with just that. But no, we need it. I just I'm just thinking of it. Well, the, the only change issue to the plans I'm hearing should be the remove the movement of the buffer of the sorry the retaining walls out of the buffer, okay. um, and we do have to re-refer to ESL because I think when I looked at some of the plans, some of the in my opinion some of the turns are tight for a, for a ladder truck, so there may be some either curbage work or parking work. But I don't want to steal Dr. Phil Stumper, so let's go with let's go to him. Okay. So, Mr. Queenan addressed one of my biggest comments. I had about half a dozen comments at this point. So, the coordination of the two projects relative to the treatment at Turner Road, uh, DOT reviewed you know, each application and made sure how they would function. So, I think you know, we were looking for a commitment that if the other hotel doesn't go ahead or whoever's first, especially with the conditions that DOT has placed on it, uh, which are no left turns at the new connecting road opposite Oakland and that they would occur in the turn. So he, he's addressed that and that would carry forward to the uh, EAF or EIS. Here we go. Um, in terms of the, we have some detail, comments on the details on the plan. One of the other items that DOT indicated is that they will not allow signalization at this time because it doesn't meet their warrants. So uh, it's important that in the documentation going forward that there's an agreement to monitor that, you know, after opening, if, if there's a change in circumstances, because one of the issues in both this traffic study and the other traffic study was the uh, difficulty of making left turns out on the Route 32. So I think that's you know just something that you're going to have to consider as you move forward. Uh, in terms of uh, traffic in the uh, scope for the other hotel, they were going to be doing a simulation of traffic along the corridor. Uh, so I would just coordinate so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I think. Your consultant already knows that. Um, with respect to the uh, connector road, we had previously recommended to at least provide an easement area for a connection to the south, uh, south, I'll call it, to the mobile parcel, because if anything ever gets redeveloped there, it would make sense to combine and get traffic to access out at Oakland, especially if there's a possibility that there could be a signal there in the future. Uh, their plans also show the relocation of the existing crosswalk on 32, and I assume that DOT, they, they didn't comment on that, but I'm assuming that DOT was in agreement with that, so we'll want to see you know, some correspondence to that, and there's some details relative to the treatment at that point. Uh, one other item that I think you know, the ESOs have to review these plans, I mean, especially with any of their newer equipment. I know it was reviewed early on, but there's been some changes. Uh, one other thing that you should take a look at, John, with the reconfiguration of Turner Drive. So the road on the west side of the martial arts is an exit roadway. It comes out in very close proximity where there's going to be more activity at the reconstructed Turner Road 32, whether or not that should be made an entry or slip the direction to get exiting traffic away from the intersection. So anybody coming from the north would be able to make that left and then you know, enter the property rather than trying to get them to exit. Uh, also, just to make sure all the coordination of any work along Turner Road with the adjacent hotel is uh, Natalie addressed the easement for martial arts. There's some other you know, details in, in that area. Um, but I think it's important to um, have a, I'll call it a post-opening type of evaluation if warrants would be met for signalization because I 
think that would be very critical to uh, traffic flow exiting yeah. from the property. And I think those are the key items. The June 16th letter uh, pretty much summarizes each of these items. Um, yeah, and the rest were just some details on crosswalks and EDA ramps. The the no the no left turn on thirty two from opposite of Oakland. Yes, I mean the intersection is designed because it's supposed to it go it allows the traffic to make the the right out on to thirty two from that intersection and theoretically you could actually shoot across because they're going to be lined up with Oakland if you wanted right. to. We know just living here that everybody tries to make those lefts from thirty two into the the, the buildings that are there. Um, while there's not a high rate of accidents, there's still enough accidents. And in the morning, it's always fun trying to get past the mobile on 32. Correct. Would the DOT be amenable, or can we talk to them about some sort of a traffic calming method, maybe a delineator or something that stops you from making that left on 32 yeah, or sure. shooting across or shooting from the hotel and trying to go into Oakland that way? Yeah, I think as part of the final design, you know, that could be worked into this. Um, you know, the, the, the concept that the DOT, you know, uh, approved was so that traffic coming from the north would be directed to turn up the turn road. So, you know, the no left into the, quote, connector road is, is relatively easy. You may have some vehicle that misses it, but I, I think at the end of the day, that's easy. The control of the other movements could be worked into the final design, and part of that really would go away if it did meet the warrant. Yeah, I mean, it would That's be. one of the reasons why we're recommending to make sure we have an easement to mobile, because if something happens with that property or the one behind it, that may trigger the warrants for DOT to allow the signal to go in there, which takes care of all the other issues. And, you know, the left turn southbound would still be restricted at this intersection but it would also better accommodate pedestrians with the signal, mm -hmm. and it would help with some of the other issues, and it may even clean up what happens in front of mobile, or at least we would be in a position to, to better control what mobile would do if some of their traffic was able to get out to this road. Because yeah, I think that's one of my big concerns right now is that, because people just, it, it, it is, and you don't even know. We still still don't know. We had the beer world that went away, so we that's uh, we yeah, don't we know. Don't we we don't know there. what's going over there. Um, and you got that parcel in between the martial yeah. arts and you got oh. it's the hill, the curve, and I just I feel like it's a comedy of errors that people are just going to miss that. Now, if DOT does eventually approve a signal there, I mean this morning, curiosity, at whose cost is that? It, I'm sorry. At whose cost? Well. One of my recommendations in my letter is to get some fair, fair contributions from the different applicants that are here. Um, but if, if it meets warrants and it's, you know, the other question is, you know, Oakland is a, uh, a municipal street, okay? So if it meets warrants, DOT can be involved with the installation. This connector road is going to be a municipal road, or I'm, I'm not sure what the proposal is. Private, private road. Private driver. So, therefore, the DOT would look towards applicants to fund most of it. Okay. Um, in this particular case, I think there are several applicants, and you know we're in enough in this process where there may be some input from DOT. They may supply the poles. So, the, the idea is that no cost to the village at the end of the day. Okay. Like. Questions, comments, concerns for Phil? Good. No? Good? Good. Anything else? I mean, you got a little bit of homework to do. Yeah, we will get the revised EAF done, and then we'll start on the draft. If we could, um, who's, who will give us the answer on the zoning? Because I'd like to just put that issue. Uh, you, um, work on that. And they also owe you the opinion from Mike for the setbacks, right? I'll forward that to the applicant, yep, and to the board. Okay. Anything else? I don't have a 
I apologize. Just procedurally, um, as we were discussing this tonight, obviously this project has been around for a long time. Um, so I think we're just trying to, we understand our next steps, but um, so if we can get the revised FEAF part one and the plans to the board and the consultants, um, and the next time we appear, would we be in a position to have uh, the FEF part two adopted as well as having a secret determination so that we could move forward uh, with the with the process? We're just trying to yeah, figure I out think, the best way to keep this. Yeah, going. we could most likely do that. Okay. Less is glaring discrepancy. Of course, of that, uh, but we, we've out. heard all the comments this, this yeah. evening and, and we'll intend to address them. Obviously, um, we anticipate the process will go on and so we'll, we'll be addressing them for a period of time, but just for the purposes of the FEF part one, we'll, we'll revise that and get that to you. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, I do have to I'll make a motion to refer the plans to ESO. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 So we'll get their feedback as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next item. Stein Vanderbilt ARB review and discuss documents submitted for ARB and Ridge preservation of proposed renovations and additions to include conversion of a garage to living space, deck, and pool enclosure. Said property is located at 21 Vanderbilt Drive in Highland Mills and is known as the Village of Woodbury Tax Maps, Section 245, Block 1, Lot 102. Good evening, sir. Hi, good evening, everybody. My name is Yitzhak Stein, Isaac Stein with Ideal Design. Uh, came for 21 Vanderbilt. Um, the project is uh, they want to do uh, they did um, they want to do a, a pool enclosure around the existing pool and some interior innovations, including uh, fixing up the garage to include it in the livable space and uh, a deck expansion. I know you have a bunch of questions, but let's do Natalie and then we'll we'll go. For Okay. Um, this application has been before the board several times. Previously, Seeker was concluded declaring this a type two action. A decision on public hearing remains to be uh, decided uh, whether it will be held or waived. We noted there are mi minor plan changes required uh, within our memo, but also uh, there is a question on whether or not the proposal complies with the coverage requirements of the zone. Uh, the applicant did provide a site plan per our prior requests. A bulk table still remains to be provided. Uh, the table should list what is required of the zone, the existing condition, and the proposed condition. Uh, we noted in our memo that based on the information provided by the applicant, we agree that the pool enclosure does not increase the coverage on the site, but that the decking may. Uh, so we've asked for a photo of the rear of the home and its existing condition to see um, you know, whether or not there is basically an increase of the impervious coverage proposed uh, along with that bulk table to confirm compliance. Uh, the applicant provided information on neighboring homes within 300 feet of the subject property. The information includes photos with areas associated with each of those homes. Uh, just for the board's reference, the proposed home after the garage con conversion to livable space is 20 to 70 percent larger uh, than the comparable homes provided. With respect to ridge preservation, the applicant provided a photo from the view corridor facing the subject property. We recommend you review that and confirm if it is satisfactory for you to make a finding on visibility. And then lastly, a photo of the existing home was provided. The applicant has confirmed their intent to match the existing colors of the home, uh, which appear to be white and blue. As you know, white is typically prohibited under the code for ridge preservation, uh, but the code does allow the planning board discretion to waive this, A, if the property is not visible from the view corridor or where materials are associated with originally approved structures. So that's all I have. I think the big thing for us right now is whether or not the coverage would comply with the zoning. Okay. Questions for Natalie? Okay. Go ahead, sir. Okay, I live in uh, I like the states, and uh, I feel I could be impartial in reviewing the application and making a determination. So I have a couple of questions, um, mostly on the ARB side. The uh, Expansion of the deck in the front and back, is that correct? Was that's that's correct. According to the plan? Yes. Um, now, are you putting in a new deck or 
But the deck there looks new in the back in the front. So I'm trying to understand when you say you're putting in a new deck, what are you actually doing? Yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure. I know we did the plans, and I'm not exactly sure if they did it already. I think uh, we discussed already that it's built. I think the front deck is already done. So, uh, yeah. I, I actually did a visit the property, so. Are you putting a cover on the deck? This is the picture that was submitted? This is, this is the proposed, yes. Putting a uh, cover? Yes, porch. covered porch, yes. Continue the covering, yes. Okay, and if I recall the garage, it's gonna be living space, and uh, both the porch and living space, it's similar to the house that we approved two houses down. So, you know, it's nice and it's very similar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we tried it. The uh, accessory structure, I'm curious why you're putting uh, on top of a pool when there are seven other indoor, in-ground pools, in fact, two across the street, uh, and they have a very decorative fence, you know, that beats code. So why would, and your house is on a corner lot. So the pool, you know, if you look at the picture, the pool is very visible from the main road. I think, I think that answers the question. It's my understanding that the customer, since it's, it's on a corner lot and it's very visible, this is why he wants to enclose it for religious purposes, to, to, uh, to be the woman to be able to swim and it shouldn't interfere with the you know, religious codes. Uh, but. Yeah, like I said, the porch and the dining is very similar, but the uh, adding it as an accessory very dissimilar to the other in ground pools in the uh, immediate area, so that's why I asked you, okay. Yeah. I'm just, and I, I see what you're saying about it being dissimilar with, but I remember a few years ago they had a big tarp or something up that was covering the pool on that corner over there. Well, they have a, they currently have a flat top. No, 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 when you came around the corner, they had a tarp so you couldn't see into the backyard over there on that. Oh, where the fence is? Where the fence is. Oh, I don't remember. I remember yeah. the fence is still there. No, 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 but I just think the way this, this house is set up, when you come around that bend, you can kind of see over that fence into the backyard. And yeah, it's very exposed. Yeah. It's very exposed. My brother-in-law used to live down the block, so I'm familiar with the, the area. And that's why I remember that there was like um, a canopy or a tarp or something that had got strung up because I understand the modesty issues. Um, so while I understand it's bigger and it's going to make the house look much bigger, you got to pick your poison, right? Is it, a, is it a six foot, then it would be what, a six foot solid vinyl fence or something that would end up having to go there? Yeah, or. Um, yeah. Or a big vinyl or green tarp. Green, yeah, or the green slatted. You know, here, again, I, I get the size of it, but it's not really increasing the living space. The pool is already there, so it's, it's not like they could put anything else there. Yeah. Um, they're making it look like the house, so it doesn't look dissimilar, dissimilar as far as construction, colors, tones. Um, so I understand what Rich is saying. I get it. It's going to look massive, but then when you look at it when the other way, what's going to look worse? A, f a big white vinyl fence that says, "Hey, look, we're trying to hide something back here," or the enclosure, or an, or an enclosure that looks like the home that just looks like an extension off the rear of the home. Uh, Part of this application is just covering the deck here, correct? Yeah, and I think a bunch of the houses up in that neighborhood have, yeah, they're all, they all have covered porches and stuff like that, right? Yeah. That's not uncommon up there. That's very common. And even, but was that even, a deck approved? I mean, you would just say that deck was installed. Yeah, it's done already. Is that an approved structure? Well, they would have, the building department would have to. That has nothing to do with this application. I mean, if in order for them, they would have to make sure there's a CO and a permit for that before they can put. It's like they put the covering on, they're going to have to go out and inspect the, the, the covering, the, the deck itself, and then if there's something wrong with the deck, then they'll... It, it's already, the, the new deck is already in. And the post, it's just waiting for the top. That's why I asked, are we just talking about putting the top on the porch or putting in a whole new deck? So it's already there, the new deck. Which, you know, to me, it still looks nice. 
I was just curious why you were putting in a new deck when there's already a new deck there, but you're saying you're just gonna put in a They wanna do the cover, right? The cover, yeah, okay. Continuing the cover. So I think the, let's, all right, let's take let's a couple go different, one, yeah, go one by one. couple different pieces of the application, right? You got the cover on the front, of front of the house, the, which is similar to I'm okay with, with the rest of the neighborhood. So I don't think that's, yeah. I don't think that's the big issue. Okay, with that. okay. Then you have the rear deck, right? And then that's where we run into the threshold issue, right? Not only right. the Correct. potential that we're over on coverage. Correct. Let's say we're not over on coverage. That's not a problem. How do people, what does everybody feel about the rear deck? I actually actually got a, a, a different, I didn't send it in, but I, I got a, a uh, um, um, how does it called, bulk table from the engineer. But he basically figures everything like existing. I don't know why he went to visit the property and he feels like that we're not extending anything. So again, personally, I'm also confused with the deck. What is existing, what is, what is what is existing? Is there an existing deck there that's being replaced? They, there, there was an existing deck some, somehow. But, uh, now, the question with that was that the person that put the deck in actually get a permit for it. And exactly. so this is where you may, we may run into a conundrum, right? So uh, we're, they're going to have to go what's in the building department, what was approved as far as coverage goes. <laughs> now, if the deck was there and it was in the coverage, and I think, again, I can't comment on it because you have to research it, but we may be okay. If the deck wasn't there and someone added the deck and didn't, then we may either have to take the deck out or you have to go get yourself a, a variance for coverage. Yeah. Question is if that's part of the application or that's for the building department to determine? Well, well, being you're asking this board to approve that part of the application, we can't approve an application that's not in compliance. So if you're showing that deck on your drawings and we sign off on that, we're saying, yes, it's okay for you to have that deck and for you to put whatever you want on there. We can't, you know, you know, we can't give you okay to put something that's not allowed to be there. Does that make any, did I make any sense in that statement there? We can't say okay to something that doesn't, isn't legally allowed to be there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, so. and all the plans I think to date have indicated that this, those decks are proposed new, so. So we'll double, you'll double yeah, check with right. Mike and then we'll figure out the, the coverage. So I wanna just go, Let's just say there's not a variance threshold issue here. Then I have no problem. Okay. Sir? And, then, and then the other question I have is on, on this rendering you gave us, um, the current picture of it has a beautiful landscape in the front with a maple tree and pines. Is that staying or going? All that beautiful landscape. So it doesn't, doesn't interfere with the, the, with, the, with the deck, with the, with the um, roof on the deck? So since the deck is already there, that that's basically shows that it didn't, it wasn't in the way, I guess. Okay, well, I'm just referring to the picture you submitted. No landscape. <laughs> I, I saw that. I saw that. And now it has beautiful landscape. That's why. I Where is this? Oh, that's in the back. No, the front. The front corner. Oh, that's, the front of the house. On the, yeah. and that's on the curve, right? We'll so by the curve. No, that's the front of the. That's to the. We're looking at the house it's on the right. Right side. Okay. Right side. okay. So all the landscaping got there. So I guess it didn't. It didn't interfere. So. Okay. So that would be a condition if the that's if the it gets approved that the land. No, you're not going to remove anything. No land. Yeah, yeah, yeah it makes it's, sense. It's they don't want to. They don't want to remove it. Yes. Okay. Um, so can we can we ask you one silly question? There's a driveway, a walkway, a sidewalk that magically appeared, going from the front of this house to the neighbor's driveway. There was what? A dry a sidewalk. What's up with that? It, it recently was put in. Really? Yeah. yeah. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to the other driveway. It goes to the other driveway. No idea, huh? No idea. Maybe we can ask, find out what they're... Because <laughs> it's not on any of the plans that you... Yeah, what is it? What is, it, is, it, is, it is it a problem for the... Well, because what's going to happen is, is if, again, if your project gets approved, the building inspector is going to take the plans we have, he's going to go out there, and say, well, this is what the ARB planning board approved. Now all of a sudden there's a sidewalk. That's not on anybody's, that's not on any of your drawings, any of the rendering that gave us. So one of is gonna either make you take it out, make you come back to us and reapprove the driveway. So let's just kind of nip that in the bud before it gets to that. Yeah, and then again, if you, if you, if you built the sidewalk onto your neighbors. Can you, can you show me where it is? If you're looking at the front of the house, it's on the left-hand side. It goes from the left-hand side of the property the to the neighbor's driveway. The other house, this is the other house driveway. 
So looking at the house, it's on the left side. It's on the left side. It's on the left side. Oh, and we were proposing a door over here, and he made a door over here. It's already there. It's already, it, they did the door over there. Yeah, it's already there. But the sidewalk is new. To the neighbor's driveway, which is a little weird. I mean, I like my neighbor. I like my neighbors too, but I don't know if I'd want to put a. I don't, I, I don't know if I want a sidewalk going to their driveway. I mean, I like you know. So we got to kind of figure out what's going on with that. You know, is that so? Is there is there an approval needed for this sidewalk? Well, if you're, if it's if it's in the neighbor's property, which I'm pretty sure it is, you would need an ease at the very least an easement in order to put a your sidewalk in the neighbor's property. I think what Chris is saying also is if, if it is legal already, make sure it's on your drawings. Make sure it's on the drawings. Because it's not on it's not reflected on any of the drawings right now. So the building department will go out there, they're gonna look at this and go, where'd this come from? Yeah. Um and I really should just let Kelly speak on this because this becomes more of a legal thing, I think, than anything else. But um for encroachments onto other properties, you know, the board has typically in the past included a condition that, you know, you are not approving those encroachments. Right. So if the building inspector found any issue with that, the applicant would have to deal with the building department and it absolves the planning board from any liability. Wow, I stepped up for two minutes. <laughs> We're talking about the whole a time was yeah. about you. We're talking about <laughs> there's a mysterious sidewalk that appeared from this from the this subject property to the neighbor's driveway. <clears throat> so we're just trying to get that squared away before. Um, well, that's interesting. Right. Okay, I made a note. We need to look into that a bit further. So people usually say we don't want to install the sidewalk. So this is. This is well, we were joking, saying I like my neighbors, but I don't know if I'd want to build a sidewalk to my neighbor's driveway. Yeah, it's not like a sidewalk along the road. <laughs> it's going to the neighbor's house. It's not coming out to the street. It goes to this is driveway the driveway to the. This is not their driveway. It goes to the house next door. Um, could you email me that photo? Yeah. I'm, this is interesting. Uh, I'm going to have to look into this. Yes. Yeah. Like, so. Do they really get along, maybe? That's what I'm saying. Oh, I and mean, then what happens when the neighbors change? You don't like your neighbors anymore. Yeah, that, that's maybe, maybe it's relatives. I don't know. I'll check it out. We got we, we we to get to the. It's, it's there. It's on the property in front of us, unfortunately. We got to figure out what the heck's going on. It'll save you a little bit of headache down yeah. the road. So, so you want to see this on the site plan? Is that something? Well, uh, it, that, that depends. I mean, if that's something that's, it comes back to, was it approved? Did anybody know about it? Pervious coverage, impervious, sorry, not pervious. Impervious Easements, coverage. because now we're on the neighbors. Easements, well, if the, if the neighbor is aware of it, is there an easement? If, what's happening here? There's, it becomes more complicated if it was just a sidewalk along the front of the property. That again is where I say most people don't even want to do that, but now we're installing it to a driveway. It's almost like a sidewalk to the north. Yeah, well, that's what, when you stepped out, we're trying to say because we know it's there. When the building department goes out, we don't want them all of a sudden going, "What's that?" <laughs> I mean, I'd be really freaked out if my neighbor put a sidewalk to my driveway. But um, we'll have to look into this, and I'll talk to Mike about it as well. Okay. Um, all right. So we talked about the decks. Right. We talked about the covers on the decks. The garage. The garage. Living space because it's just a larger family. We need more room, or what are we looking? Correct, at? Correct, correct. They're basically they're doing the dining room in the in the garage area, standing there. How many more bedrooms are being added? I'll be very honest. Those plans were made uh, one and a half years ago. I don't remember. <laughs> I I don't understand how you don't have every single application in front of you memorized. I, I don't get it. <laughs> No, I was coming to talk, to talk about the, the, the pool enclosure. I just didn't. I didn't really. Oh come on! You've been in front of us before. We know you know we're gonna we're gonna go over everything you give us. I don't see this thing. I don't think. There's the deck. New dining room. No, it's everything is existing. Right, but the new rooms is it the they're expanding the master and uh, the master suite. Right, is the garage looks like it becomes the new dining room. Yeah. The garage is the new dining room on the first floor. Yeah, and then on the second floor, <laughs> expanding the, the the master suite. 
Okay, so they're putting, look, they're, they're doing a, 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 a new yeah. walk-in closet, a new bath. So there's a sitting room. So they're taking the be master that's bedroom. bedroom that's over the garage already. Okay. And they're going to take that real estate and make it a walk-in closet and a, a master. All right. No, no added bed. It doesn't look like there's any added bed. No bedroom status, no. Everything's existing open to below. Okay. Yeah, the occupation says no added bed. Right, so good. that's good. No, the, the, the drawings go with that. All right, so. Can I get my issue with the garage myself? Okay. Now we got to talk about, we got to talk about the, the pool enclosure. I'm okay with this. I think, like you said, there Could you put it up an eight foot fence? You need a variance. Yeah. I, it's not like it's usable. I mean, the space is already taken by the pool, right? Yeah. And I get yours. I get your what you're saying, right? Because it's on the corner, it's visible, big. As we've asked other applicants, can we get a picture the existing house? With the exi I know they got the red thing. Same to you, buddy. I don't know. Can we get a, you know, a rendering of the enclosure? It's right here. Oh, this is a, this, this is going to be right here. This is it here. So it's I, I know. single story. Yeah. It looks like the pitch will make the same coloring, same, same everything. Same everything. Um, I have no, I have no issue. So. All right. All right. I know we're missing a full board, so but we can't even take a vote tonight anyway, but we don't have Evan's feedback. Um, but it does boil down to uh, we're at the point, other than the coverage issue that um, needs to be figured out, um, and the mysterious drop. So I mysterious think they are, side they are expanding the, the rear deck. So, right. Yeah. I think we need to find out what deck, if any, was approved and figure out Right. Well, I'm. Dig a little bit on this. No, I know there's like two things we have to figure out as far as coverage goes and what was there and what wasn't there. I'm just at this point. I'm just trying architecturally how it looks. Like let's. If everything was, if everything was okay with, with our research, how do we feel so we don't keep? Yeah, because we we've kind of this application kind of cycling for a little bit. Um, like I said, I'm okay the way it looks. And it's not the biggest house. I think it's a lot better looking than putting some. I think it's, I think there. that's that's my argument there. I think it's better than a fence or some sort of Actually, let's see tarp or something or else going up there. Okay. And then it's got to be maintained. And listen, if they want to use the pool all year round, God bless yeah. them. I'd like to see your electric bill. Um, <laughs> public hearing. I'm inclined to say no, but only because of the size of that. I, I think you should have it because. People that live across the street that you know. Yeah, I don't know how it, it's feel. a big structure. Big end. I'll, I'll say yes. Okay. And then there were other people right across the street that have in ground pools. The same thing. They're gonna want it to. Okay. Then we can do that. Yeah. Let's. Uh, all right. So I'll. Uh, all right. So I'll offer a motion to schedule a public hearing for our next um, planning board meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So I think there's a, there's three two things here at play, right? We'll have the public hearing. Um, or maybe go ahead. It's July fifth, but I just want to make sure that you're going to have a quorum. I don't. I'm not going anywhere till the following week. Is anybody else not going to be here on the fifth? I will be here. I'll be at the fifth. The you'll be here. Correct. I'm here. You're here. But what? That's it. We just gotta. Shut the whole place down. Then. Okay, so we'll have a quorum. For, we'll have a quorum for the fifth. Then. And is it good for the applicant just because it's the fifth? Got anything going on? No, someone come from your office can be here. Okay, on July fifth. July fifth. Make sure. If he didn't want you to show up and be like, oh, we've got to do this. Do you think maybe we could figure out um, the we threshold? We try to figure out the threshold issues before that yeah. meeting. This way, we could potentially take action. Yeah, move it along. Yeah, it sounds like the applicant does have a plan with the bulk table, so that's the first part. What am I missing? Oh, what? Kelly just gave me a strange look. What did oh. I miss? You, no, you said um, so you could potentially take action, and I said we could authorize a drafting of. That was what I was asking. That no, we'll have we will work. You guys can hopefully have the threshold issues figured out. Public hearing. 
public hearing, that based on the outcome of the public hearing, we could then, if it's however the board wants to, potentially authorize you to take action at that meeting. I thought you meant you were going to authorize me tonight to have a draft, and I was like, no, 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 I'm just trying to get the, the timeline all set up for the app so the applicant understands, too, okay. where, where we're at. So most importantly, public hearing, July 5th, everybody will be there, and... Yep. And then hopefully we'll have answers to the threshold issues. You'll do your homework on the mysterious sidewalk that showed up overnight. And all right. Now regarding the porch, what is it? What is it that we are? If, if it's not legal, and we cannot. Uh, okay. So the the oh wait. So the rear deck is we got to see if it if it's legal already, right? If it's an existing permit. If it's legal already, then I think we're okay as far as coverage because we're not increasing. He said they're expanding. They're expanding. We would have to see the. The degree of deformity you're you're going to go over if it's you know if it's a five foot deck and you're making it ten feet, are you going over on coverage at this point? Mm -hmm. That's what we got to figure out. We need to figure out if you need a variance or not for the deck. Because if you need a variance, then you know where you got to go and you got to get right. Back. So we need to go for the variance, and in the meantime, the pool enclosure is also on hold. Or how how does it work? We well, would have to take the the um, the deck off the drawing then, right? Take the deck off the drawing, or you just deal with it all at once. Well, I missed the second part. Or you, I said, or you just deal with it all at once, and you put the application on hold, go to the ZBA, and come back. So those those would be your two options. So I think you, you you'll be in a better position once you hear back from us right. whether or not you are over on coverage with that deck. Well, the problem is not to say, say it's a problem. Um, you know, the, the deck aside, it's not clear right now what the existing coverage is. Like, what you, they have to provide that bulk table. You said you have a bulk table, right? Yes. Yeah. So, can you forward that over to Natalie for us right. tomorrow, please, so she can look it over? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. And, then, and then we can look at, you know, whether it is an approved structure, how it's changing, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And then just um, you guys can, in the, if you need to work in the background to figure out coverage, just go ahead and okay. do that. So by the time we come to the public hearing, hopefully we have answers. Sounds good. To do. Although I didn't drop your motion for the public hearing, so I have a motion, but I don't have a second. Tommy second. second. I thought Tommy I second. second. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Well, any questions? Brian, we, we voted on it. OK. Oh, then I just was too busy trying to interrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> I also have a question. One of the comments was that the plans are not clear somehow. I would like to understand which uh, portion of it what comment I'm assuming you're referring to my memo I'm not sorry uh, I didn't write a memo so so, so there was that the, there's lines uh, um, I, I, sh I should have be able to, to we had asked for you to be consistent among the size of the pool enclosure among materials that was a plan revision the coverage we needed to figure out I think I only had the one plan revision at this point. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the current architectural plans contain broken links and missing details. Applicant to revise and review notes on architectural plans and consolidate. So I think the plans that we have architecturally. There's two sets, right? Yeah. And it might have just been the electronic version, but there were missing, there was missing information. I can clarify for the applicant if that's okay separately. Yeah, it's fine. It looks to me that must, nothing is missing, so yeah. Yeah, maybe it was the electronic version that that happened. But we'll clarify for you. Thank you. The structure of the pool, is, is it, it looks like it's attached to the deck. Is that correct? <coughs> I would imagine there would be an entrance from the deck into the enclosure, right? I don't see it. Are they, they going to jump through the window? That's there. <laughs> That's why I'm questioning it. <laughs> Structure only. Maybe a slide. It looks like it's flush against the deck, but there's no door. Yeah, right. It, it's it's not it's not uh, directly connected to the deck. Well, the plan looks like it is. If you look on page A3. What, imagine the pump in the heater? Oh, dehumidifier. Oh, I, oh, a little bit, okay. 
That, that's the exhaust the exhaust system. Yeah, look, no, Rich, look, there's a staircase here, and it actually looks like there's a, there's no, there's a dimension, but there's no, they, 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 drew, the the arrow, they drew the arrow, but they didn't put a dimension on it. Yeah. So it looks like there's a staircase that goes from that deck, and a little walkway. There you go. Yeah, so you see, there's a railing, so there's a rail, there's, here's the deck, this is the railing of the deck, so in the drawing, the railing of the deck and this back wall here are touching each other. Yeah. So I guess what Rich is asking, is this going to stay separate? You're going to have a window that looks onto the deck, or is there going to be an opening that goes from the deck no, into so the... It's a window. So it's, it's a window. window. Okay, so they're going to be... The entrance to the, to the over here and over here. Okay. So there's going to be a separate structure. Okay. So separate. Separate. Yeah. Kids will enjoy that, will Like, Dukes of Hazzard it through the window. Okay. Well, that's when they have the conversation with the building inspector, uh, they'll... Yep. Oh. <laughs> Sandy Jr. Right, anything else? All right, so a little homework, well, a little bit more than a little homework for you, but some minor things were not so minor, pending. But we're trying to move it along. Can we, re re Can we do it again? So what, what, what do I need to do next? July 5th. You have a public July 5th hearing. Public hearing. Public hearing, got it. And if you get all the I'll send them worked a out and that back deck worked out, yeah. uh, we could possibly for resolution at that point. So right. Natalie's going to work with you offline. There's some outstanding items in the memo that have to be addressed. So I guess you all send over the coverage to, Nat uh, to Natalie that you got from your engineer. Natalie will work with Kelly and the building inspector to confirm lot coverage and what is or isn't been approved from the decks that are there. Once we get a confirmation on the lot coverage and on those decks, then they'll have a better answer for you going forward of what you need to do. As far as, will you need a variance? Will you not need a variance? Do you need a permit for the decks? Do you not need a permit for the decks? And then, is that what we're going to be part of what we'll be approving in this application? All right, sounds good. So to make, I think I got most stuff, right? Yep. All right, so, and then the public hearing, hopefully, we'll, if Natalie does say, though, you need to make a couple changes to the drawings, if you get it done before the, public hearing, that'd be great. This way we have everything and we, we don't get in this, you know, we're waiting for uh, a drawing to come back. Appreciate it. And then you're going to find out about the sidewalk for us and yes. how it magically made a note about that. <laughs> the mysterious <laughs> sidewalk that showed up. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a good, good night. night. Have a good Thanks. night. All right. Uh, being no further business above up in front of the board, I'll offer a motion to close. Second, any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 8.41.